Hi all, I'd like to welcome you all to this new tutorial series on how to create your very own terminal-based text editor in Go programming language. Before we start, I'd like to highlight uh, both the project goals and the features. So let's kick start with the project goals. So the first and probably the most important thing here is that I, want to, I wanted to create a text editor for myself. So uh, for those of you who like either Emacs or Vim or VS Code or another uh, GUI based text editors, well, you probably have encountered uh, an issue that you like your text editor in general, but you would like to have some features or want this to behave a little bit different than it does. So probably an idea to write your own text editor uh, has come to your head once at least. Same for me. And uh, one of the biggest problems uh, for me uh, is when I have too many features. So you know, like uh, I feel a pressure when there are too many features and especially when there are such features that I don't even have an idea about they exist. But uh, don't, uh, don't be afraid that uh, it's supposed to be something weird, although probably it would, but the idea is that I wanted to make a text editor that will be covering the very basics of the text editing in general uh, so that by building this one you can later either turn it into a Vim clone or something alike or to turn it into something like, like an Emacs clone or uh, a, te a text editor like Micro etc. The second goal is to learn uh, the Go programming language because uh, before this project I haven't ever written a single line in Go programming language because uh, I didn't have to. But because of the uh, turnbox go, go library uh, is like, binded to Go programming language, yeah, I was forced to actually learn this a little bit. But yeah, with, with modern chat GPT, uh, it's just a matter of like one day and I can write in Go. <laughs> it's quite, quite cool. Well, although maybe not the best practices all along the way, but when did I follow the best practices, right? And finally, uh, share knowledge with others, So, which I already said. So like the very basics are that if you want to write a text editor, no matter what this text editor is going to look like, this basic knowledge, this uh, basic building blocks uh, every text editor has are absolutely essential to learn how they work. And I will try to deliver them as in didactic, as didactic as possible, in the most didactic way possible. Okay, so the features, uh, I was really uh, concerned about uh, like not having too many features, but meanwhile not having too few features, because if you have too few features, it doesn't feel practical, although minimalist, but not practical. So uh, uh, the features are the following. So the modes, uh, someone like Vim, but much more simplified. So this editor has two modes. So you see here now we are in the view mode. So in the view mode, if I just uh, press keys, nothing happens. So if I press E, I go to the edit mode and I can type some, something. Meanwhile, I can uh, use the arrow lines, uh, arrow keys. No fancy HJKL like in Vim, but the arrow keys. So modes are displaying the buffer, which is the internal representation of uh, the text file we are editing. And the status bar, I'm really proud of the status bar. Uh, so we have the mode, the file, how many lines it has, modify flag. Copy is, uh, if you copy something into the clipboard, then this shows you that there is something in the clipboard. Uh, undo redo works a very interesting way. So let's say you want to try something, but then you want to restore this exact sort of um, state of the document. So you can just press S uh in the view mode yes and undo is here and then let's say you just uh done something and then you just can do load and it just restores things back yeah navigation so so to show you the navigation i will just escape from here so i'm not going to save anything i'm just going to escape from here and i open the source file itself so uh, page down goes uh, like the fourth part of the screen so that it sort of scrolls smoothly and I can scroll to the very end. We have uh, three, 300, uh, 300 lines here. Another way, so if I press zero, it goes to the very beginning of the file. If I press nine, it goes almost 
to the end of the file. So the navigation works the following way. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So just to give you an idea what happens now, just want to show you the source code for this particular part. So I'm calculating the ninth part. So text land of the text buffer uh, divided by nine. So here, if I press one, this is the ninth part of the text buffer. And if I press two ninth part of the text buffer multiplied by two, and then respectively by three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this allows me to sort of go to a certain part of uh, the buffer. So starting from the next video, we're supposed to be uh, writing the source code like function by function. Uh, so again, to give you an idea, so we just go away from here. So the functions we're supposed to be implementing, well, let's, let's actually start with uh, the variables. So all the variables uh, are here. So mode, uh, which is the integer, so either uh, view or edit mode, the text buffer, the variable holding the uh, particular uh, the text, the file representation uh, for the editor. Undo buffer is to uh, preserve the current state of the text buffer. Copy buffer is just to preserve the current state of uh, a certain line we're supposed to be copying. Uh, rows and cars is the size of um, uh, the terminal which you can dynamically resize and it's still going to work. Offset X, offset Y uh, are the variables to uh, implement scrolling, scroll to scroll the text, and the text is scrolling both in uh, horizontal and vertical uh, directions. Um, current row, current call is the cursor position. Source file is this one, uh, the name of the file you're editing just right now, modified. Uh, so here, if say I do something, the file is modified. So modify flag is holding whether the source code has been changed or not. Read file. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, now, now let's go to uh, to the functions. So read file, erase file from the file to the buffer. Uh, write file writes the buffer to the file. Uh, Insert rune. A rune is this specific uh, it's a unicode character in Go, so that it's not only be it might not only be the ASCII character, but some emoji or whatever. So insert rune uh, allows you to put the cursor somewhere um, and insert whatever characters. So this is what insert rune does. Then delete rune is again the same, but uh, if you delete one. And obviously, if you go to the very end uh, of the line, it just uh, jumps to the previous one, which is also quite important. So that's what the delete rune does. So these lines, just a casual de delete. And here, if we go to the next line, we need to uh, alter the buffer. Insert line is uh, uh, covering the enter key behavior. So if I hit enter, so I just split the line uh, where the cursor is. Uh, the previous line just gets like this. Next line uh, copies the what was from the cursor to the right and it appends the uh, new line to the buffer and copies the content from what was on the previous line from the cursor to the right to the very end of the line and puts it to the new line. So that's the insert line. Um, Okay, cut line uh, is just when we press, say, D. Uh, so we just cut line and then we paste it back. Um, so cut line is just literally cuts the line. Copy line, um, just for copy paste, so press C, copies line, uh, and I press P, paste line. So no longer need this. So this is the paste, paste line code. Push text buffer in pull text buffer is for undo redo. So I just again exit from here and so say I say uh, S. So see this undo here, which means that uh, the state, uh, the current state of the buffer has been pushed to the memory. And now oh, let's drop back. Uh, now we can. Uh, push text buffer. So 
what I've been already showing demonstrating so we just say change something here and then we want to go back so we're just restoring the state of the buffer that has been before scroll text allows to scroll in both vertical and horizontal directions which has been shown display buffer actually types this the, whatever content of the buffer we have to the terminal uh, print message is the helper function to uh, print the string at given coordinates with given attributes display status bar prints this magnificent status bar below All right um, get key uh, processes the keyboard event just to return uh, it actually returns the event which has either the keys like uh, cont those containing uh, escape sequence sequences or just the ASCII characters Process key press is the routine to handle the user key, uh, the, uh, the user input basically. All right, and again here it also depends on modes. So in case if we have the insert mode, uh, then we do like input the character and otherwise if we are in the edit mode, then the keys are going into the command mode sort of, or the view mode as it's called here, so you can you can close the terminal, uh, go into edit mode, write file, cut line, copy line, paste line, uh, push text to buffer, pull text for buffer, this undo sort of thing. You can navigate from 0 to 9, that's pretty much all about it. And, uh, and then for the actual text editing within the edit mode, so space, enter, just what they do, backspace to make sure that, two types of backspace, make sure that or, or whatever system is going to work properly. Arrow up, arrow down for navigation, home and navigation, page up, page down, navigation, left, arrow left, arrow right, also navigation. And finally, we need, we need to fix the cursor position, right? So it's not going just directly up where there is no space, but it just goes to the end of the line. Run editor is uh, can be treated as the main loop. So here within the main loop, well, essentially what we do, we initialize the terminal to some error handling. Um, the way how it works with like how to open file, how to save file, we now demonstrate this. Uh, the idea is the following. So if you do not specify the command line argument, it just creates a file called out.txt. If you specify the command line argument, then it opens the file. Uh, and you can also create the file uh, by specifying the uh, name of the text file that does not yet exist. And here is the main loop. So we dynamically resize uh, calls and rows by calling this term, term box size. Uh, rows minus minus uh, is to make sure that uh, we have one extra row for, to display the status bar. Uh, this part, we, we not allowing making the window shorter than 78. Um, uh, 78 columns. You might be wondering why 78 and not 80. Well, that's because uh, the size of the image of this magnificent VT100 terminal I'm using to record this video uh, holds exactly 78 characters, not the 80. So that's the reason. So you can do this eight, do 80 here. Clearing the turn box window and scrolling text, display text, display status bar, uh, put the cursor to the distant position and flush whatever we have uh, to the to the screen and then we process the key press that's pretty much all about it when the main, main function runs the editor so we have up to yeah 300 lines here uh, 300 lines and we are done so starting from the next video uh, we're supposed to be implementing these functions one after another and eventually uh, we'll come up with the editor that works exactly like this one I've been demonstrating. So one last but not least thing, so let me just uh, quit from here. And again, so just to demonstrate, so if I just say ego without any arguments, it creates the file called out.txt. Uh, so I can do something here. Uh, I press W to save the file and I quit. Uh, and now I suddenly have the file out txt in here so I can now say ego out.txt and I keep can keep editing the file for instance right quit 
if I create the file that doesn't yet exist, say 111.txt, and just go for edit in the file, right quit, then it creates the file 111.txt. And that's pretty much all the functionality. So you cannot do save as sort of thing, but you can provide the command line argument uh, which uh, gives the file name of the file which either exists or not. So if the file exists, it's open the file. If it doesn't exist, then it just uh, creates it. And that's pretty much all about it. So yeah, guys, this is it from my side. I'll see you in the next video and we'll start writing some code to implement this actual text editor. Thanks for watching. Until then, and cheers.